Tensions rising in Alpine It seems like the last race in 2022 will be a fierce one for Alpine, given how both drivers feel for each other after the Brazilian GP. It's safe to say that Ocon hasn't been really respectful when it comes to clean racing between him and Alonso, and that is why they both have almost collided on multiple occasions. So what is the real deal between Alonso and Ocon? What happened in Brazil that really triggered Alonso and his feelings? And how will their rivalry continue in the future now that they'll both have new teammates? Alpine is a team that has struggled a lot with reliability issues in 2022, but due to the power advantage of their engine, they've been able to beat McLaren and secure a 19-point lead with just one race left on the calendar. Therefore, it's safe to say that they'll probably secure the best of the rest title, as Ocon will be paired with Gasly from 2023 onward. What's also very interesting is the fact that Alonso will drive for Aston Martin alongside Stroll, the guy who launched Alonso in the air during the Cota GP. But still, 2022 has been a year in which Ocon and Alonso have fought fiercely, even though on some occasions there was absolutely no need to. For example, in Jeddah, it was clear that Alonso had the speed advantage, but Ocon refused to let him go and battled fiercely for the position. Ultimately, this cost Alonso a lot of lost seconds and hence lost points. Similar things happened in Budapest, where Ocon wasn't willing to let Alonso go in lap 1 and closed the door aggressively. Later in the same race, Ocon was exiting the pit lane and closed the door yet again on Alonso, and this move was utilized perfectly by Ricardo, who managed to pass both Alpine drivers in one corner. It seems like Ocon just doesn't want to let Alonso pass him whenever the Spaniard has the chance and isn't willing to sacrifice his race for the two-time world champion. Last year in Budapest, Ocon won the first race of his career, and it goes without saying that huge thanks should be given to Alonso. The Spaniard defended heavily against Hamilton, keeping the Brit at bay for a couple of laps and ultimately allowing Ocon to secure a safe position ahead. But in Qatar, we remember that Ocon didn't really bother to defend against Perez, even though Alonso specifically asked for Ocon to defend like a lion. The latest sequence of events happened in Brazil, and it seems like Alonso has had enough with Ocon. The Spaniard tried to complete a pass on Ocon on the main straight, and while he was at fault for not turning right on time and was handed a five-second penalty for this, it was still an aggressive overall defensive drive by the Frenchman. When Alonso collided with Ocon's rear right tyre, he said on the radio that we lost the front wing because of our old friend. However, before we go into their statements, it's worth mentioning that the CEO of Alpine is very furious with his driver's actions. While talking about this issue, Laurent Rossi told both Ocon and Alonso that what they did is really a sackable offense for anyone else. Schaffnauer spoke about the meeting that they had all together, adding, I would have said the same, but it was Laurent Rossi who gave them the talking to in the briefing. And he just made the good points that this is a team, and we've got over a thousand people between Viri and Enston working tirelessly to give them the equipment, the car, the upgrades that they all longed for. And then they have to play their part as teammates too to bring the cars home and score good points, which is what he, Rossi, said. And he also told them that they're privileged to be racing car drivers, and if they had any other job in the company and they did something like that, they would be let go for gross misconduct. And it's true. But it seems like Ocon just doesn't want to acknowledge when he is slower and his teammate is much faster, and this is an issue that he's likely going to have more often from 2023 onward. When talking about Alonso and his qualities, Ocon said, I think it was not too nice what he said in the media. I always have a lot of respect for him. He's a legend, and I will keep my respect for him forever. Doesn't matter what he said to you guys, I prefer when we speak together. As for the incident in Brazil, Ocon said that it was more than clear that Alonso was at fault due to the fact that he was the one that received a five-second penalty. Although both Alpine drivers were severely hurt by starting the race so far back on the grid, they made a great recovery and managed to finish P5 and P8, respectively. But it wasn't without some extra tension, given the fact that Ocon had to be asked multiple times to not fight Alonso when both of them were positioned P8 and P9, respectively, with Vettel ahead of them. In the second safety car restart, Alonso had much fresher tyres and Ocon was given the order to not fight Alonso, but the Frenchman said that he needed to battle Vettel. The engine 
engineer then was a bit harsher and said that he doesn't want the Frenchman to battle the Spaniard, to which Ocon said that he needs to pass Vettel first and then he won't fight Alonso. This time Alonso was allowed to pass Ocon without incident, but the fact that Ocon had to be reassured of his actions and prevented from doing something stupid shows that the team does not believe both drivers can fight fairly and squarely. Ocon also spoke about the situation in which his engineer was a bit rougher than he was supposed to be in giving the command, saying that the team shouldn't tell him what to do. I think it's been not very well translated, because people thought I didn't want to let Fernando pass. I said no, I don't let him pass at the restart. I'm going to pass Seb, and then once the situation is settled, we will figure that out. I'm not going to fight. I'm going to let him go, and that's what I did. I couldn't have held them. He was very fast on the soft tire, and obviously, there were points for the whole team to grab. So I knew I was in a situation and the team didn't need to tell me what to do. The outcome of the sprint race was something that Alonso commented on saying, it was sad but the pace of the car was very good today. We recovered to P15 so if we keep going at this rate tomorrow, I think we're going to still score two points. So let's hope for that. Obviously it is one more race until it is over so I'm looking forward to Abu Dhabi. I nearly went into the wall in Jeddah. I remember also in Budapest and now today. So nothing to talk about. So it's the way these things are. Sometimes it's very competitive inside the team. It happened to him, Ocon with Perez, with Verstappen here unlapping himself in 2018. So it's one more race. But apart from Laurent Rossi, Schaffnauer also wasn't very happy with how these drivers acted during the Brazil GP. And it's not the first time that they've had these duels, as you already know. However, this time they were in a very close competition with McLaren for securing more points. And now that both McLaren cars were out of the race, Alpine needed to utilize as many points as they could. After the sprint race went pointless for them, it was a do-or-die situation on the track on Sunday. When talking about the outcome of the sprint race, Schaffnauer bashed both Alonso and Ocon for their actions, adding, Frankly, both Esteban and Fernando must do a better job to complement the fantastic efforts of everyone in the team by avoiding on-track incidents and compromising the entire team's performance. Today, both drivers have let the team down. I expect more from them tomorrow, where we must do everything we can to recover some points from the weekend for the championship. We aim to ensure we go to Abu Dhabi next weekend in a position where we can reach our season goals. Tomorrow is a new day. As a result, it goes without saying the tensions in Alpine have never been higher. Although both of these drivers won't be teammates in 2023 and beyond, they'll still be racing, and now that they'll be on a different team, the situation will be much different. But they would still have to be very careful with their new teammates, due to the fact that they won't budge as easily as they'd hope to. What do you think about the tensions in Alpine? Let us know in the comments below.